Many of you have expressed deep anger and disappointment. Many of you are upset that someone who attempted to destroy our democracy was invited to sit on a stage in front of a crowd of Republican voters to answer questions and predictably continued to spew lie after lie after lie. And I get it, it was disturbing. It was quite disturbing. There's Anderson Cooper then responding to a lot of the fallout and anger over that CNN town hall that hosted Donald Trump to sit in live for over an hour to apparently a full on Republican audience, maybe not the ones watching. So Anderson is addressing the situation. It seems like he's pretty much on everyone else's side, man. How can he say these things on the air on CNN right after this big event? Oh, one person talking about it as well was also Donald Trump himself. In fact, he posted this about it. Uh, see if this makes a lot of sense after they graciously invited his dumb ass in. <laughs> That was President Donald J. Trump ripping us a new ass here on CNN's live presidential town hall. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. Thank you, because there you saw Donald Trump ripping us a new a hole, apparently. Uh, obviously, an, an AI faked or deep fake video there with uh, the, the conclusion there from Anderson Cooper that Donald Trump, who then was invited on, talking about how great it's going to be and maybe things will be disastrous. He's then directly going straight back to the network. Wonder how they're feeling about this agreement now that this is now being posted, things like that. Still, there was a lot more that Anderson Cooper had to say about it. First, as you guys heard, he's talking about how predictably uh, uh, libelous or how much of any lies this guy may tell on the air. What do you say afterwards? Let's watch. As good a job as Galen Collins did trying to fact check him, it is impossible to fact check fully because he lies so shamelessly. Now, many of you think CNN shouldn't have given him any platform to speak. And I understand the anger about that, giving him the audience, the time, I get that. But this is what I also get. The man you were so disturbed to see and hear from last night, that man is the front runner for the Republican nomination for president. Now, maybe you haven't been paying attention to him since he left office. Maybe you've been enjoying not hearing from him, thinking it can't happen again. Some investigation is gonna stop him. Well, it hasn't so far. You have every right to be outraged today and angry and never watch this network again. But do you think staying in your silo and only listening to people you agree with is going to make that person go away? Well, apparently if you're upset about this whole thing, you're uh, you're covering your eyes, you're staying in your own silo and you only want to listen to people that agree with you. Maybe the kind of turn you shouldn't have taken Anderson because then that fallout continues. After it seemed like he was on pretty much a lot of folks side. But uh, as he went through that whole thing, it seemed like a smug approach to take. Uh, but the real reasons that they went through this are also coming out too. So it doesn't make these types of statements look any better. This is some of those backroom conversations Trump and those guys were having before they went on. He was not, Trump himself was not particularly concerned by whether the broadcast would get high ratings. Even though he did tell CNN's chief executive, Chris Licht, who's behind all this backstage, that he would boost their ratings. To which Licht nodded and said he should, quote, have a good uh, a good conversation and have fun. That's what a couple of sources even said. So it's about the ratings, or it's not about the ratings, but then it's also about, hey, go out there and have fun. Not go out there and try and represent, uh, maybe tell some truths, uh, get a few voters on your side be, because you'll tell them what you'll do as president in the country again. No, no, it's go out there and have some fun, which I think Donald Trump did. A little bit more because afterwards, Trump allies joked that the event, uh, uh, in their eyes, amounted to an hour of Trump infomercials and should be recorded as an in-kind campaign contribution. Again, how's that agreement working out for you guys over there at CNN? What's your thoughts here, Miranda? I have mixed thoughts about this. So my gut reaction was the same as I'm sure a lot of people's gut reaction was, which was this is disgusting. I hate having to watch it. I hate having to listen to it. And my first reaction was, I can't believe we've given him access to a platform where he can spew this garbage. I have, and I still do believe that, but I have two minds about it because I also understand that what Anderson Cooper said was true, is that this is the front runner for the Republican Party, and he is going to find a way to speak no matter what platform it is on. And the people in the audience are his voter base. And so as horrible as it was to hear them laughing at the disgusting things he had to say, it was very much a reality check. And as much as I try to not lock myself into a bubble as far as media goes, 
that ends up happening. Um, and so it was very much a reality check of, oh yes, a third of the country does think this way, does support that. And I think silencing someone simply because they don't, I don't like what they have to say feels very tempting in this moment, but is something I wanted to keep my eye on and maybe try and consciously stay away from no matter how awful I thought that it was. Yeah, I mean, from your perspective, from your point of view, because you know you're up on the 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 things that he's saying and how blatantly false those things, many of those things are. Uh, and I think people are worried about the folks who then find themselves in support of him or thinking about it, or going, "Oh yeah, that's right, those things happen." Because it seems like these lies are so blatantly obvious, but then we still get confused when folks really believe those lies. Now, this is the one part about this though, uh, Miranda, is when we have that uh, that whole presentation come out there. And then from reports from the audience, it was full of Republican and potentially his voters, but they were allowed to cheer, clap and all that stuff, but not allowed to boo or groan or even show any kind of disapproval for the things that he's yeah. saying. So it didn't, the, CNN then then didn't find themselves on another even ground thing. It was just, let's present a positive spin to this guy's conversations rather yeah. than give them the real deal. Cuz a town hall, maybe you'd run into people who don't agree with you, who may be exactly. also your supporters. And that just wasn't able to be presented. Yeah. Uh, Anderson Cooper wasn't the only person though that was trying to, uh, um, I guess, make it look a little bit better because Caitlin Collins herself who had to host this entire thing and talk to Trump for over an hour. Of course, she came forward and she was speaking to. About last night, the 70 minutes that I spent on stage in New Hampshire with former President Donald Trump was a major inflection point in the Republican Party's search for its nominee and potentially the starting line for America's next presidential race. It's important to remember that he is right now the GOP frontrunner, a race that he is running as noted while being criminally indicted found civilly liable and under investigation for everything from his handling of classified documents to his business empire. Also notable is the Republican reaction on Capitol Hill today to someone who could easily once again become their party's nominee. Is it worry that your party's leading presidential candidate of is advanced? Does. That's why uh, I don't intend to support him for the Republican nomination. Last night provided a clearer view of where Trump stands on the key issues that America is grappling with right now. So we're seeing the approach, it seems like at least as they're saying, we hosted him, but we're gonna make sure you guys know how many lies he told afterwards. We're gonna let you know how ridiculous it was. We're gonna let you know how even some of his Republican counterparts aren't on board. So maybe that's the cover on the back end for themselves and the approach that they took with this. Um, so I mean, I guess I get that part and many people are coming for Caitlin Collins as well, just for even being there and, uh, and, and letting him go through the steamroll, which I think she tried to a certain degree to stop. Um, but I guess I'll give you this uh, 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 point, Miranda, on this point. I don't think what he was doing there, even though it was letting give this pretty much free platform to do it. I don't think he convinced folks who were like, "Oh, I'm totally not voting for Donald Trump," or "I'm on the fence." Donald Trump is kind of a negative towards me. To hear what he said for that 70 plus minutes, and then say, "That's our guy." <laughs> yeah, no, I think that what it comes down to, at least I have noticed in the past, is the swing voters, and I don't think that that is the way that you win a swing voter at all. Um, and so you're right, I don't think he swayed anyone really one way or the other. And I do hate that they weren't allowed to do anything but cheer and clap. That is the one part I had a really, really difficult time with is no, if you're going to invite someone on a platform and allow them to speak, you need to allow people to honestly react to what he has to say and not suppress any sort of reaction from them. Um, but yeah, spewing the hate disgusting. I don't think he made any new friends. He just sort of continued to solidify the support that he did have.